Hello and welcome to this quick compare setup tutorial of the Opus software. First, you have to open the quick compare setup. The window starts with a method tab. Here you can either load and edit an existing method or create a new one. If you load a method, you will get some information about it, for example the data block type. If you want to create a new method, you just have to type your method name in the description. The three lower options will be topic later in this video. In the next step, we change to the reference spectra tab. In this tab, you can add or delete reference spectra. Just click on add, choose your spectra and press open. You have to pay attention that all your files have the same data block type, so AB or TR. Otherwise, only the files of one data block type will open. Now you see the file name, the sample or compound name, and some information about the open spectra. You can delete one or more spectra by clicking on them and then press delete reference spectra. So now we get to the parameters tab. Here you can see the spectra you opened before. In the next step, we select the region or the regions for the data comparison. The standard setting is use file limits. We recommend the manual variant for best result of the comparison. So deselect use file limits. Now you can manually move the borders by selecting them and moving over the mouse. Or if you want clean numbers, you can type your limits in the table. If you want two different areas for the comparison, you right-click in the grey area and select Add Region. For the outer limits, you should choose the wave number 50 to 100 number within limit of your measurement. In this example, I exclude the area 1900 to 2400, the region of diamond adsorption and the carbon dioxide peaks. The latter is too possible via the Exclude Carbon Dioxide Regions button on the left side. Furthermore, you can choose between three data processing options – None, First and Second Derivatives. When generating a new method, you should always start with None. We will later come back to the two other options. So now we get to the last step – the Validate tab. First, you have to choose a threshold, so the percentage with which the spectra and the reference has to correlate for clear identification. We recommend to start with 95%. Higher values means higher demands to the sample quality, but less problems with related materials. Typical values are between 94 and 98%. Now press validate to proceed and to save your method. Afterwards, you will receive a green and or red list. Every red entry means that spectra are too similar to identify them with a given threshold. Via left clicking at the plus, you can see the percentage, how alike they are and to which spectra. Goal is that all entries are green. There are a few possibilities to get there and you can combine them. The first and easiest one is to increase the threshold. This only works if the new value is higher than the correlation value. Furthermore, it changes the requirements to the sample you want to test. In this case, this option won't work because the correlation is higher than 99%. The second option is data preprocessing. Go back to the parameters tab and choose the first or the second derivative. The benefit of a derivation is that it makes it easier to separate between similar spectra. However, Derivation increases the noise and you might get problems with spectra with board bands. The third and most honest option is to build groups. In this example, potato starch is very similar to rice starch. But the question is, is it spectroscopically possible to clearly distinguish between them? If not, you have to group them. So we go back to the reference spectra. The file name is not editable but the sample or compound name and the info are. To group the spectra, just give them the same sample name and as additional information for the report, write the exact sample name in the info box.
Afterwards, go back to the Validate tab and press the Validate button again. Now you see everything is green. If not, you can change or expand your options. Equal which option you choose. Afterwards, go back to the Method tab and press Store Method to save it again. You can save it as a new version or just overwrite your last one. The method is now ready to use, for example in Opus Touch. For this, the method is quickly uploaded and can be directly integrated into the different workflows. This way, users get the result with just a few clicks. But of course, you can also perform the evaluation in Opus IR. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. We hope all your questions are answered and we wish you a good day.